Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the garage review for one of the new Halloween tanks that's available for purchase, the Dreaddozer M48A2 Round Panzer. Now my initial impressions of this tank is that it's pretty mediocre to be honest. It does some things quite well but other things really quite badly. It's generally I'm not a fan of it. I, I just like I said, I just think it's the things that it does badly don't make up to the things that it does well. And the main thing that it does badly is the gun. So let's get into the stats. Uh, 650 horsepower. It's not the most mobile medium tank in the universe, and that's because of all the spaced armor, like the ram on the front. It makes it not the quickest to get about the battlefield. Also means the traverse isn't the best either. So we've got 6.9 rounds a minute rate of fire. 6.9 is not that good. For, for a tier 8 medium tank with a 90mm. So we're going to have a look at some of the others. So this, that's the Indian Panzer, the Tech Tree tier 8 German medium tank. 8.33 rounds a minute with a 90mm. If we have a look at the Panther 88, obviously it's an 88mm but it's 8.7. If we have a look at the Panzer 58 Mutz, at 7.5, so that's, I think this is one of the slowest firing ones of the 90mm at tier 8. I think the Panther 2's got a similar rate of fire, yeah. So if we were, this, I mean the Round Panzer is a German version of American tanks, so we're going to have a look at American mediums. And in terms of, well I run the Pershing with this 90mm, which is incredible DPM, but even that one is better. And that pen, accuracy, aim time, everything about it is just flat better than the Round Panzer. The Pershing's night Super P's, again really slow. I think that is one of the slowest 90 mils. I think the Round Panzer now is, is the slowest. 8 rounds a minute on the T95E2, that's a 90mm. The 225 Pilot Vengeance, 7.69. 7.41 on the M46 Patton KR, which is pretty poor. And the gun stats aren't that good for it. But again, the gun stats are still slightly better than the Round Panzer. But yeah, Death Stalker, accuracy is not that great, but the aim to, you know, the rate of fire is great. What I'm trying to get across to you here is how bad the reload is on the Round Panzer compared to most other tanks it's going to see. Or tanks that are its equivalent, pretty much. I mean, the Stone Cold fires. It, with its re with its auto loader, the Stone Cold fires slower, right, than the Round Panzer, but it's got 280 alpha, so that means its DPM is better. So compared to all its compatriots, all its equal tiered 90 millimeter wielding medium tanks, this thing fires so slowly, 6.9. I will add that it's a 7.89 rate of fire on PC, but their stats don't mean much to us really so it lost a whole rate a whole round a minute rate of fire when it came in and I can see why it fires faster because the whole point is it's supposed to be quite quick firing quite quick aiming in for terrible accuracy that's that's like the trade-off but they took that away so it doesn't have that anymore so now it, it just like I say it just makes it completely mediocre and I don't know I, I just means I'm not a fan 205 standard pens, not too bad. I mean, there's a lot of tanks out there now that are tier 8 with 225, 220, you know. But for a 90mm wielding tank, again, that's not too bad. That's probably about right. And 245 on the APCR, which is quite nice. And that's that. The APCR pen is quite nice in my experience. It does work for the most part against most things. The problem is you've got to hit them. So it's got 2.3 aim time, which is different to the PC's version, which is 1.9. Again, it feels like it's it takes an age to aim in to then miss for 0.42 accuracy, which is bloody terrible. And that's the problem. I'd say if it aimed in slightly better, the gun might feel slightly better. Because you'd aim in quite quick, well, relatively quick, but you'd miss. But then you didn't spend 2.3 seconds waiting for the shot, you know, for the gun to aim in to then miss anyway. So that's a bit it's a bit disappointing in that way. And like I said, this this gun is what's supposed to make Well, the armor is also makes the tank, but the, the gun is what 
you're really looking for, especially. And, yeah, it's not very good. So traverse speed on the hull, yeah, it turns very slowly. It's, for a medium tank anyhow, it's, it's quite a slow traverse. It's more in keeping with the heavy tank, really. Well, the more mobile heavy tanks, anyway. Now, turret armour. 254 on the front, 76 on the sides, and 51 on the rear. We'll get into the armour model in a minute, but the turret armour from the front, if they shoot around your mantle and around the front of the turret, it's pretty strong. Now, of course, it doesn't really keep up with tier 9, 10 premium rounds. That's a different story. But if you're facing the same tier tanks... The front of the turret is very strong. The traverse on the turret is pretty slow at 26, but fair enough, okay, it's it's quite well armoured. And it's, you know, it's it could be better, but there's not many that have that good anyway. 380V range is about average, I think, for the most part, for tier 8 mediums. Yeah, it's alright, it means if you use coated optics and brothers in arms, food, all that lot, you get way above the 445 view range sort of area. So you get in the full view range you can before you start devalue, devaluing camo. So that, that's good. So let's have a look at the stat, the other stats. So like I say, power to weight ratio, 13 horsepower per tonne. It's not the quickest. It is quite slow to get up to that top speed i'd say 40 kilometers an hour it's not like i say it's not a very mobile medium really it's that's more with like again more mobile heavy tanks and it's probably a bit more like a heavium but the thing is the armor isn't quite that reliable it is quite good and i'm going to show you instances where it is quite good but for the most part yeah it's a bit unreliable but it's slow so 8.69 base reload it's just not it's not that nice especially with that 0.42 accuracy good lord it's terrible 2.3 aim time coupled with it makes the gun handling feel not that great feels like it takes an age to aim him accuracy on moving the tank that's not 3.36 isn't all that bad I'd say I mean obviously you always want to try avoid avoiding shooting on the move but sometimes the shots you don't take you don't hit you don't get pens so you know if, if you're going to be firing on the move it, this is more likely to hit than something with a bigger gun so that's okay accuracy on rotating the turret 1.53 it means that if you turn the turret the gun bloom doesn't become massive it's all it's all right it's not too bad when you turn the turret you don't have to re it doesn't take you forever to re-aim so that's okay nine degrees of gun depression just like the pattern so okay, that that's good, you know. Ten degrees is like god tier, you know, god tier gun depression, and then when you're going beyond that, it's just fabulous. But nine is still worthy; it's still very good. So it means you can work a ridge line with this perfectly fine, and you'll see that in some of the in some of the replays. So yeah, thirty degrees rotation speed, twenty six on its turret with three hundred eighty view range. Camo rating, that's one thing I've just seen. Yep, camo rating is 14%, which is pretty poor. But that's because it's a big, fat tank. Never mind the the garish, bright, glittery camo. It's big, easy to see. You're not going to stay hidden all that much in it, to be honest. There's not going to be that, that many situations where you're going to stay unspotted. So, the shell velocity on the AP is 972, which... Is not good, but it's not terrible, so you take it. 1,177 on the APCR. Again, that's that's not, you know, it, it's not brilliant, but it's good. That's that's approaching good levels. So the APCR velocity is all right. 853 on the HE as well. It's not too good, but it's usable. That's one thing. The pedal on the HE is 46, I believe. No, 45 even. 320 alpha. I carry four shells on it because, especially at the minute, it's quite prevalent with lots of light tanks knocking about. If you're facing things like Lycans and they come yellowing through, Becky Lynch's, what's the other one, Spear Panzers, you can pen them with this HE and you can brutalise them with it. I've been doing it quite effectively to Becky's and stuff like that. And it means you can just maximise your DPM on them, but you've really got to make sure you hit. 
because obviously with it HE and it's the fact that it's quite low pen, if it hits anywhere where it might possibly not go through, it's not going to go through. That's the unfortunate nature of it. So, the armour. As you can see, around this turret front, it's pretty darn nice. If we go to the all viewer look, it's very, very strong. But there is one glaring problem, and that is that cupola. It's big, it's fat, it's quite easy to hit, and it 139 millimeters. It's very easy to pen, very easy to pen. And if this thing's hauled down, that's what you want to aim for. You want to aim for that cupola because it's so easy to pen, and it just nullifies what this tank can do sometimes when it's hauled down. Especially because people seem to get lucky and catch it all the time, even if they weren't aiming for it. But if people hit your gun mantlet and around this area, and they've got like, you know, less than 250 pen, they are going to bounce more often than not. And that is really nice about this tank compared to something like the Undertaker and the Type 59, well, the 59 pattern, which have pretty much the same turret, but less armour on it. So that turret armour is very nice, and it means it's a bit more forgiving, to be honest, when you are hull down, because you can ricochet things, unlike Stone Cold, Undertaker, Patton, because those tanks, if you get something that's firing at you with two, what, 230, 240 pen, they will probably just go through your turret anyway, whereas this will bounce it, and that's very nice. So, you've also got this big ram on the front, and that is 30mm of spaced armour, which means if people are firing HE and heat at you, so, to say, Dragons with their Hesh especially, they're probably not going to pen you in the front. Or they won't. They're just going to splash you for like 100 and summit, pretty much. Because it's not going to go through that ram. Heat will get absorbed, most likely. There's also this little engine exhaust thing, is it? I don't know what you'd call that, but it's, that's there as well on the front of the hull, and that is spaced armour. But the problem is, behind that is only 50 millimetres of armour. So really, that middle section there is actually quite weak. So you'd look at it and you'd think, oh, maybe that's quite strong. It's not. If it was the same as the rest of the upper plate, which is 110, well, it's really well angled, 110, 100, and, you know, 1, whatever, it'd be okay with that 30 millimeters of spaced armor, but not. If people shoot it right in the middle of the ram, some middle of the ram, they're just going to pen it. And I found that it's really unreliable. It's troll. It's kind of like the Trinity's armour is. In the fact that it's really troll, you will bounce quite a lot of shots sometimes, but then, for the most part, you just won't. It'll just pen you. I've also found that things with lower pen, or lower than 200 pen, really do struggle with the RAM. So if you're coming against, say, ISs with 122s, or like I've found even people who aren't aiming as well, if they auto aim at you, they've got less than 200 pen. Gorinich, I've you'll see it in the replay. There's a Gorinich, there's a Lance and C. I've had other things like the ISs and stuff like that with 100 odd, you know, 175 pen around that area, and they just bounce off the ram, which is really nice. But if they hit the upper end, they if they hit this upper end lot, see where it's 57 millimeters on here, that also does seem to catch shots, and just below that with the 101 area, even though it's angled, people seem to pen it. So that's my experience of it anyway. Like I say, I run a rammer, vert stabs, optics, push the view range as much as possible. The vert stabs to help it whenever I'm moving or when I come to a stop. Because it just means that your gun won't be the gun balloon won't be massive when you're moving, and even when you come to a stop, it'll help it for that. And when you turn in the turret, and that always helps. And obviously rammer to maximize the pretty mediocre DPM. And that is a word I'd use to describe this tank, and that is pretty damn mediocre. I'd say, is it worth picking up now? Probably not, to be honest. I'd probably say, wait till next Halloween when you can probably pick it up for free, like all the others. I, w I, I, cu I couldn't recommend you paying the money for it. In the big bundle with the Fangula, which I believe is, what, 20k gold? We'll have a look on here. Ah, I think I've gone past it, haven't I? Yeah, Dreadful Duo, 20k gold, 20,660 for both. That's pretty good going. So if you wanted to buy these tanks just because, 
get that bundle because that bundle uh, twenty thousand gold for a tank that is going. I think it's going to be eighteen k. Or it might even be sixteen k, something like that. The I've not seen the base price for the Fangula, but getting that bundle means you're going to get it cheaper, and it's probably more worth it. But yeah, on the whole, like I say, the word I'd use is mediocre. But I'll let you make your own minds up from when you watch the replay, and you might look at, you might see the replays, and you might think that's the tank for me. So, as always, everybody, I'll see you on the replays. So here we are. This is a clip I have of. A game I had on Icebound. A map I don't like. But let's not get into that. And I thought it showed probably quite well what the armor's like. Because there's, there's certain situations that we'll get to in a. well, soon anyway. That show what that ram on the front can be like when people just auto aim and fire at you and they've not got the best pen. So, generally, like I say, the armor on this thing is troll rather than reliable. The turret arm is nice, again, it can bounce a lot of stuff as long as they don't hit the cupola. And we are just working this area in the middle of Icebound just to try, well, just to, you know, w watch what the armour does. You know, use the space star of the ram and that. We get a nice shot into the side of that bug horror. We're quite lucky not to get tagged by the TD. And we're kind of looking for the shot into him again, unfortunately the accuracy of the gun lets us down and we end up shooting the gun of the bog horror rather than the side which is what we're aiming for which we could have penned. We aim for the cupolas of the T28 prop but I mean it's not the best thing to aim for because they're not really that much of a weak spot. If you're going for the T28 prop's front you want to be aiming for the turret cheeks rather than the cupolas to be honest. No, unfortunately, that's something that keeps happening to me in this tank, and that is the low roll. We're hitting for 198 when we've got 240 alpha. Now, we didn't aim properly on that lever, so unfortunately, the 0.42 accuracy went, ah, well, actually, I'll take that shell and miss. So we're coming to the. Here we go. We're coming here. Now, he's auto aiming and firing at us, this Lanson seat, as he's driving round. And we are keeping our front to him as much as humanly possible because again he might he probably struggle to pen us through the ram he needs to aim for our upper plate above the ram to pen us but he's not he seems to be just auto aiming and firing and hitting the ram and not penning and obviously wiggling also helps in that fact that he might not pen us as well but you say like people 200 on pen might struggle just because of you know just because of the ram and the spaced armor and it means that the armor is quite all right now as i drive around this corner i'm like oh crap it's a goronich and then he bounces off of our ram which again like the goronich is something that i was pretty confident wouldn't pen us again he bounces 167 standard pen means that you know i, I just i feel like he won't actually pen our front that reliably even if he sees the upper plate if it's foreign prem maybe but yeah that's the clip of that game on icebound pretty much uh, showing what the armor can do when people do that to you so here's the second game well here's the first full game i should say anyway and we're pretty badly bottomed here on westfield so it's westfield assault which means that they are all going to spawn at the bottom of that hill and we spawn on top of it like we have. So that means we can get to this ridge line over here without them even cresting up. You know, we can get there way before they even reach the top of the hill and we can get shots at them before they manage to get across. Now, normally, it ends up meaning that the team that spawns on the attacking side ends up just sitting on the ridge line at, on the 6-7 line and don't move. It's normally what happens. I don't. I, I'm not quite understanding why we spawn on top of the hill and they don't. I think it probably should be more. They spawn on top of it. We spawn on top of it. You know, both teams do. But hey, that's the way it is. So we're gonna see if we can get shots at these guys. There's a king tiger. There's this inferno that are kind of pulled down. There's definitely something else to the left of that inferno because we just see this shot fly past. That's an E3. We're never penning that in a month of Sundays that's definitely not happening and um, we're just going to see if we can get any shots at these guys like I say they're all pretty hull down 
So that E75 is hull down as well, which is painful. They're all painful things to shoot at. And we've loaded the Prem because there is a lot of tanks that we are just not going to Prem with standard. Like, it's going to be a struggle to... We're, like, we're never going to Prem the, the E75, for example, with standard unless we get his side. And while they're all hull down over there, the best chance is loading the Premium. But this Tiger 2 is yellowing across. Unfortunately, the Inferno manages the Penners somewhere. And we're just going to keep popping shots at him. Again, with our 205 standard, we might not even pen the side of this Inferno. We can pen the front, like we got here, but we might not pen the side. Just that the angle he was at, anyway. So we've still got Prem in, and we're trying to shoot at the 75 but we, we're not going to need Prem for this King Tiger. Um, he's my most likely source of damage at the minute, so that's why I loaded the standard back up. Then we've got this Panzer 7, which is crossing in the side. We can pen him in the side. If he angles slightly, we might not. But we're still going to try. We hit his back, we ricochet, because, like I say, it's like 180 millimeters of sidearm or something like that on that thing. So, yeah. So we bounce on the side of the E3 now with our standard rounds. If we'd been firing Prem, we'd have penned both of those two shots that we fired a minute ago. But we're not, so we, we didn't pen it. We aim for the back end of the E3 because that's where we're most likely to pen. We're not like as likely to pen the side of the superstructure of the E3 as we are the back end where the engine deck is. So that's something you want to do if you see an E3 is shoot the back end, not the front end. Because you are more like, it's like th more thinly armoured. So this E3 is a bit of a pain at the minute, so we're just going to track it. And I was kind of hoping that if I track it, people might shoot it, we might get assistance. But unfortunately he repaired it immediately and he's posing a wee bit of a problem because I'm not going to bounce that. That is something that I'm pretty confident is just going to pen me if he decides to. He fires though so I'm like okay people are going to get bold we'll try and track and pet well we'll try and track it but we end up penning it and not tracking it funnily enough. So we track it that time get the 200 assistance on his health obviously like every little bit helps for XP and stuff and credits and we've got a little bit of nice assistance on in there so this Panzer 7 is alone and there's a lot of us here so it's all about just pushing in and getting the free damage we get a nice shot into his side we're hoping to reload in time to get a nice another shot but unfortunately he gets shut down by the chieftain who fires way quicker than we do because his DPM's pretty magnificent and we're just gonna push on and we're going to see what we can do. I mean, it is Lakeville. It is Assault. So, a fair amount of their team have gone down the K-line as well. So, we're going to try and see if we can spot anything up as we go along. There's this F-4005, which is the pen. But, unfortunately, bad accuracy. No, aim, no aiming on the accuracy of this gun. So, hey, we missed. The way it is. And we're just going to push across. And we're going to try and get shots at these guys in the side as they are... Well, as they try and push our cap, really from that side. You can see shells flying in from across the K-line. So we're going to try and get... Well, we're trying to get into position to for them to be in render range. Now, this is potentially risky in trying to pen this Andre because we are, because of the spaced armour and the distance with the AP, is quite likely to bounce like that. As I said it. So the first pen was quite nice, but it was quite likely to bounce and fortunately for us to pen the first one. That shell flies true, which is nice. I was kind of expecting it to miss, just to the point four two and how trash it is. But it didn't. And we've got the C75 down here now. I'm being a bit careful, because I know there's an FV4005, probably at like E7, sort of helping this E75 out, possibly. And I don't want to take that big hit, because that is something you just don't want that, do you, really? So as we come over, we track this E75. It's like, please guys, farm him. Farm him for all he's worth. So as we're driving along, we're going to retrack him. And hopefully, they'll all farm him. And we load HE as well now. Because it's an FE4005, and we can pen that. I know he'd already fired at the Chieftain. So as we're coming down, we've managed to pop, an, pop a nice shot into his back. Pop a nice shot into the side of his turret and then he gets finished off. So that was quite nice to do with the HE. Then we get 
lucky that the 261 didn't hit us, but he knocks off a, like 300 of our health, which we could have probably done with later on. We see this Rhymatel, we get a nice shot into him, damages Amorak. And he's going round our E3 and probably, yeah, he's going to kill it. We pop a nice shot into him again, and we load HE, this one, because of what he's going to be doing to us, which is what I'd expect him to do, which is try and go round us. He luckily bounces the E4 round, and we load HE because we want to track him. We could put, if, I mean, it's one of those tanks that we could probably pen with the HE, but we wanted to track it because tracking it would probably end up killing it but I think he, run, he must run a double repair kit because he's probably repaired his Amorak and his tracks there, annoyingly but anyway, our team managed to carry it end, out to the end, the timer expired that Ramatar ran away, we got the Ace Tanker Confederate, 3.5k damage, 2k assistance, and a very nice game for a horrendously bottom tier matchup, the Hurlum Hunter did as well as well he got like nearly 6k combined, which is good for that tank in that terrible matchup we had and yeah, 25 shots fired, 20 hit, 21 hits, 14 pens. It's 14 pens because we had quite a few shots that flew wide. It's like aiming for upper plate and hitting lower plate. Or aiming for lower plate and hitting up, low, upper plate, that is. And stuff like that. It's gun accuracy just it feels terrible, generally. I've had a lot of games with it where it just misbehaves non-stop. And you just you wish you could hit things and pen them. That's the way it is. I'd say if it aimed faster... It might be nicer, but unfortunately the 2.3 aim time coupled with the 0.42 really, really doesn't help it. So here we are in the second game, and this one we're on Pearl River. Swindle's in his equaliser, I'm in the M40A2. And this is where I'm talking about HE, right? This Becky here. We've got HE going in, penning for 347. Now it's 320 average with the HE. But that's the kind of rolls you can get with the HE, and it is delicious when you manage to pen those light tanks like that. And you get rid of them quicker, and you get better damage quicker. So that was alright. Now, this SU-130PM scares me a little bit, because obviously he could hurt me. Swindle hits him with the equaliser, and doesn't pen him, unfortunately, so he does like 497. He is a worry, but I was actually pretty sure that that SU fired HE at me and missed. As he drives around the corner he's looking into the sky, I don't know why. We try and hit the Goranich as Capola but unfortunately it misses. But we're in a good position really, as long as they don't hit the Capola, we should be Gucci. Now you're seeing a bit of the bad accuracy of the gun there, like it dirt the floor when mostly aimed on the SU quite annoying he's clearly trying to come back so I'm like okay I'll shoot him again no that one pretty well aimed it hits the floor and of course he fires HE at us kills two crew members kills the commander and the gunner for like 300 damage 200 damage really annoying the Tiger 131 doesn't hit us we try and hit the Tiger 131 it's pretty poorly aimed but also accuracy <sighs> again we aimed for the, the gap, or should I say the upper bit of the armour of the Tiger 131, but we ended up hitting his turret and bouncing because bad accuracy, and we just keep putting shots in. Now this guy is really kind of annoying because he's broke our gun this time, which is not what we wanted. We miss again, and we're going to pop round and pop a nice shot into this 131 again. He gets shut down by the Fatherland that's come barging in, and hopefully they'll shut down the SU. That SU really trashed us. And I put the gunner back in instead of the commander because really having no gunner in this tank really, really kills it. It really does because obviously bad accuracy is terrible for this thing. So we got slapped by a heat round there as well from their base. That's the STA 2 from what we'll probably see in later on. And I tried to pen the Goranich in that lower bit below his gun commander because with 205 pen you can actually pen it. But Unfortunately, we ended up hitting just above into his gunman lane, it ricocheted. We got a nice shot into his tracks, so I got a little bit of assistance off of it, and we're up to 2.3k damage. But now those guys are gone, we're seeing where the enemy team is, and the enemy team seems to be quite heavily on the K line. I don't want to push into their base, and I don't want to push the heavy down at B7, B8, because if there's anything sniping on their bamboo hill at F2, that could wreck our day and we've got no commander so we can't spot it at all 
if we decided to go down there. Whereas normally, if we did push down there, we could make an aggressive push to where the their enemy tank is spotted at B3 at the minute and hope to spot what is camping up there. We can't because we've got no commander, so we'd never spot it ever. And then we'd just get done. So we're seeing where the enemy team is going. Um, the Atomic and the others are going straight down the K-line, which means we need to get back to the base and get back to the situation where the TD is to help. Now there is a T-44 that I sort of ignored for a second and went, oh, it, I did the whole, I've not got a commander and forgot that I won't be able to spot him. He's literally sitting in the water just over there next to that mountain. If I had view range, I'd see him, but I've got no commander, so I cannot see him, right? And that was the problem there. Because he knocked out my commander, it meant that I was, you know, incapacitated in that way. The Centurion 5 1, cup yellows over and ends up not penning us. The Atomic comes down and he's intent on YOLOing. He tracks us without penning again. And this is kind of awkward because he has got a good rate of fire. We get a nice shot into his upper plate. We're trying to swivel this tank round so that he can bounce. There we go, he bounces. We track him, and like I say, I'm pretty confident that he's not going to pen that ram, pretty much. That's where the, the armour on this thing is quite nice, and obviously if he hits the turret as well, he's quite likely to bounce. So we've got the 751 up here that we want to try and attack as well. And it's kind of risky. Their M4043 gets a bombardiers, which, unfortunate. But yeah, that's that's what happened just as he, before he got shut down as well. And we're coming up against this 751, and it's kind of risky because obviously he can't pen where the ram is, but he's kind of shooting down, so he could possibly pen the upper plate. So that was a risky move, but we got away with it. We ended up bouncing him, and that's what I mean. Like you can't really, rel you can't truly rely on it, but it does come in handy a lot, and that's quite a nice thing about this tank in that armor. But is it enough to warrant? the changes to its gun handling and its rate of fire, probably not. Like it just makes it quite painful in a lot of bad matchups. And generally, yeah. So I think that STA two was last spotted in their base and it was last spotted at like D one, D two. So I was kind of expecting him. See where that guy pinged is where he was. So I was kind of expecting him to be running down the one two line. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to run down the 1 2 and I'm going to go try and spot him. Oh, I'm just going to try and go get as much damage on him as possible. So, we're going to end up running down here to absolutely no avail. And that's because, in a second, there you go, the light tank spots him up and he's running down the river. So, that's annoying because obviously this medium tank isn't the most mobile going and it takes a little bit to get across the map so I mean you are getting to see what the mobility of it is like as we're moving along it's okay I've really got to try not to kill myself don't do it I've done it too many times on this area when you're coming down randomly you hit a bump and it's like you know what just bang you're blown up so trying to just be careful while coming down them I'm trying to not let physics do us in. But yeah, like, the mobility of this thing isn't like most mediums. You can't really get across loads of places that quickly. But that's because of the armour. And obviously, the armour is okay. And it, you know, it, it's troll, is, is the way I put it. But it is a medium tank. And when you see bottom tier matchups and even mid tier matchups it's not the most effective armour in the universe so the mobility, the mobility can kill it a little bit when you get those kinds of matchups so I mean we are travelling at what 36 37 consistently 40 top speed that's where the you know the power to weight ain't the best but we're trying to come up now onto this century. We're trying to hopefully get another shot or two into him before he gets shut down. He pokes our guys to shoot them. Gets one shot. Gets shot by the guys over there. He's going to get shot by his MX before I get there. But then we manage to finish him off, which is all Gucci. 
So we end up with 3.9k damage, well nearly 4k damage, it's only off by 5, 2 kills, 642 assistance, high caliber, ace tanker, steel wall, and a confederate. And yeah, it's a it's it's an okay tank, but it's 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 just deeply mediocre as a tier eight medium and there's a lot better ones out there to be honest. So I can't I couldn't really recommend picking it up. But if you know, if you like the looks of it, if you've seen you've seen the game pl gameplay now, you know, make your own mind up on it. And just don't let my dislike for it come over the top of that. So as always everybody, I hope you enjoyed the review and I shall see you next time.